now for your uh, one thing before we start one thing before we start just to stop wasting a lot of time from now on from now on whatever lectures we are going to have if you have any question keep your question till the end of the session okay so i'll give you 10 minutes if you have any question you can ask at the last 10 minutes okay in the previous in the previous um In the previous classes or in the previous class, we learned different terminologies related to isolated foundation. We learned what are the typical loads coming on the foundation. Uh, we learned how to uh, how to choose whether we are going to go for an isolated foundation or a combined foundation based on lens based on the distances between the columns and then we started the problem with the isolated foundation we learned what's the meaning of service loading what's the meaning of ultimate loading we learned how to calculate the bending moments uh, and then we started taking some basics related to one way and two way shear without entering into the calculation of one way and two way shear OK. Now, previously I was planning to, to complete the one way and two way shear. Um, but rather than doing that, rather than doing that, that I'm going to start a combined foundation problem. For the bending, so you can see how the bending moment calculation will differ from an isolated to a combined combined foundation. And then after we finish, doing the, um, the bending moment reinforcement and foundation we're back to do the to the to do the shear one way shear and two way shear for the isolated and one way and two way shear for for the combined foundation okay so once again whatever we have finished in the previous class we have finished till the point of finding the reinforcement okay we finished till the part of finding the reinforcement. I have explained some basics related to one way and two way shear, but we didn't enter into the calculation. So I'm going to go to, to do the same with a combined foundation problem in which we are going to learn how to. Uh, how to find the geometry of a combined foundation since since it's a little bit different, a little bit complicated uh, compared to an isolated foundation. And how to draw the bending moment diagram, how to find <coughs> how to find the reinforcing re reinforcement according. Okay. So I'm going to solve this particular problem. So this is another another isolated foundation. We're not I'm, I'm not going to touch it for the meantime. And this is once again related to an isolated foundation. I'll give you a hint on how to solve this particular exercise. This was one of the trickiest questions, one of the exams. And then lastly is a combined foundation problem. Of course, now we are not going to design Ralph's foundation. We are not going to design other types of foundation because of the short period of time. But mainly we are going to concentrate on isolated combined and if there is sufficient time we can go for isolated with eccentric loading. OK, so this is the problem. Now what what you have in your PowerPoint, if you're having your PowerPoint, the previous PowerPoint, you might be seeing uh, different values. Uh, I have modified the values accordingly, so it will be. Uh, uh, a combined foundation. Otherwise, it would, it would have been an isolated foundation. Okay. So once again, if you are saying that the values which you have in the PowerPoint that I have uploaded previously, and whatever is presented here is because that I have changed the values. Okay. So today, by the end of the day, I'm going to upload for you. Okay. Upload for you the presentation, or I'm going to give you. OK, I'm going to give you a OneDrive link where always any update 
or the PowerPoint will be located over there. OK, so I have taken I have taken this problem. I have taken this problem to the whiteboard. In the whiteboard, it says design. We need to design. We need to design. Uh, a rectangular base to support two columns. Carrying the following loads, so we have column number one and we have column number two. All of, I mean, each one of them is carrying a dead load and a life load uh, of certain values. The columns are 350 mm square columns, and they are spaced 3.5 meter centers. The width of the base is not to exceed two meter, and the safe bearing capacity or safe bearing pressure is going to be 160 kilonewton per meter square. The material is grade. Uh, grades are 35 for concrete and 464 for the steel. Now the first thing that we need to we need to understand is is how to draw. Okay, so what I understood I understood that we have two columns. Okay, two columns, and we have the distance between the two columns is to be 3.5 meter. They told me the columns are spaced 3.5 meter centers. OK, and we have something called. Column number one. And we have. In this dimension. For the column. Is 350. 350 mm. And they told me. This is in terms of a longitudinal section. This is in terms of a plan. In terms of a plan, they told me. That this dimension. This dimension, which is the width. Should not exceed. You shouldn't have it as more than uh, two meter. So the maximum value to be taken is two meter. OK, so once again, the width of the base is not to exceed two meter, so the maximum that I can use is two meter. Now for me, the first thing that I need to do, okay, the first thing that I need to do is to go and check whether we are required to have isolated, whether we go and require isolated or combined foundation, okay? So we are going to go, first thing, we are going to go for checking Or isolated or combined foundation. Now you need to help me here in the calculation. Okay. Since there's no solution ready in the PowerPoint. Okay, so you need to help me in the calculation. Make your oh, uh, put your uh, calculators ready. Okay. So now if I go for isolated, okay. If I go for an isolated, then how we are having it? We are having it as column number one. This is in case of isolated. Column number one, say or column number two, and this is column number one, and each one of them is having is having their own. It's having their own base. This is isolated. So if we go and calculate, if we try to go and calculate, we can see that area or foundation number one, or let's say not foundation, let's say, okay, or foundation number one, which is carrying column number one, is equal to, we have learned that it's equal to load divided by say bearing capacity. The same thing that we can do, area for foundation number two is going to equal to load divided by say bearing capacity now this load is for for whatever foundation number one and this load is whatever for foundation number two now if we go and see the loads if we return and go and see the loads you can see here that we have for column number one we have 700 710 as dead load 560 as as light load so i'll just go here 
I'll say this is going to be 710 plus 516. And we need to take the self weight into account. So we are multiplying by 1.1. Our safe bearing capacity given in the problem. Safe bearing capacity given in the problem to be 116 kN per meter square. So we are going to use it as 160. Now for the other for the other one, once again, we are going to see how much is the load coming on foundation number two through column number two. So we have 830 and then we have 4, 420. So 830 plus 420 multiplied by 1.1 divided by the say bearing capacity. Now what we are trying to do once again, what we are trying to do, we are trying to go and see how much is the area required if we are going to go for an isolate. Now, can you help me in getting the values here? How much is the area required for foundation and bone? So we have it as 8.731. Okay, meter square. Okay, now what about area number two? Area number two. That is going to be 8. 8.59375. Meter small. Okay, it's up to you to go for how many decimals. It's up to you. Okay. So now we have finished from area number one and area number two. We need to take into account whenever we are talking about an area of a foundation. Whenever we are talking about an area of foundation, we talk about okay, whether it's isolated or combined. We talk about them. And we talk about width. Now the maximum width that we can use is two meter according to the question. So it means now we have the area, we have the width remaining is the length. So for me, what I know area is equal to length into width. So if I want to calculate the length, then the length is equal to area divided by the width. So in case of in case of in case of foundation number one, if we go for the length required for F1, and then length required for foundation number two, then here we have the area, which is 8.7, so 8.7313, divided by two meter, which is so. And then here we have 8.59375, divided by two, which is the width. So in the first scenario, we are having 4.365 meters as the length. And then here approximately we are having 4.297, let's say. Now, is it clear whatever I have done? Is it clear whatever I have done? After after finding after finding the length after finding the length, let us try to draw once again to keep it a little bit simple. Okay, so what I understood now, I understood that this is my column number one, this is my foundation. So the distance from here to here is four point three six five, and then the other column. The length is here 4.297. Okay. Now, what I know other than that, I know that the distance between this column to this column is 3.5 meter. Let me in finding how much is this distance from here to here. Can you get, can you help me? How much is the distance?
Okay, so if you divide it by two, if you divide it by two, how much is it going to be? So 2.125. 2 and then here, the second one. The second one, can you help me with the second one? The second one is 2. Point, let's say 2.14 approximately. Now it means it means I require I require from the center of the column till the end of the foundation I require to have 2.485 or whatever. Okay. Once again, that depends on how many decimals you can do. Okay. So 2.1825 and 2.1485. Okay. Now if you see. The distance from the center of the column till the end of the foundation is available already. Okay. Now, in reality, in reality, if we go to the plan, we have a column here, and then we have another column here. Now, the distance between these two columns, the distance between these two columns is 3.5 meters. But you are telling me that the foundation required here, okay, the foundation required here is having a width of 2 meter. And then having, of, let's say, from, to be 2.1485. And then the other thing, the other, the other foundation is the same thing. Where we are having it in this way, where this is two meters, and you can see that this is going to be the distance from here. Is 2.8, 2.1825. Now you can see if I add 2.14 or 2.1825, I'll be getting a length of 2.14. Okay, you will be getting a total length of how much? 4.331 meter. Now, do I have do I have a spacing of three point? I mean, do I have a spacing of four point three three one, or am I limited only to have three point five? Do I have do I have a distance of four point three three between the columns? If I have that distance between the columns, then I'll go for isolate. If you have lesser, then these are going to overlap. OK, these are going to overlap, so it means. OK, it means that combine. Foundation. OK. Once again, it's very clear. I have a distance of 3.5. If I go for individual foundation, I require 4.331. I don't have a space of 4.331. I have only 3.5. If the individual foundation are having a dimension of 3.5 or lesser, it means that they will not overlap. If they don't overlap, means we're going to go for isolated. If you are having more than 3.5, means they will enter into each other. And then isolated foundation is not possible to go for. Okay, so we have finished. We have finished from doing the first part, which is selecting, selecting the correct type of a foundation. The next step is to find the area of the combined foundation. Now, whatever we have done, whatever we have done till now is finding the area for an isolated. Now we need to have an area of the area of of, a, of the combined foundation, let's say. And once again, it's the same equation. It's the same equation. We are using area that is equal to the load divided by safe bearing capacity. Now, this combined foundation will take how many columns? This combined foundation will take the loads of how many columns? It will take the loads of two columns, so I need to add them together. Can you make yourself, please? 
Okay, so we have how many loads are there? How many loads do we have? We have 7, 10, 560, 830, 420. These are the loads on both columns. Okay, so can you give me these loads, please? So we have 710, 560, and then we have 830, and then we have 420. Now, once again, we need to cons consider self weight. So I'm considering self weight. So 1.1. 1. 1. Okay. 1.1 1. 1 divided by, divided by, sorry. Divided by the safe bearing capacity, that's 160. Okay, so can you give me the total value now? Okay, so here we have 2772 divided by 160. So we are going to have 17. Point three two five meter squared. Okay. Seventeen point three two five. This is the area of the foundation. Now, once again, there is a restriction. Now, for me, if I go and see, this is my foundation. There is column number one. There is column number two. And then the width has been given as two meter. That the maximum width we can use is two, two, two meter. So it means that our length, our length is going to go as 17.325 divided by two. This is going to give you 8.6625. So let us say this is 8.7 meter. OK, always keep your dimensions to be in terms of 0.1 meter. OK, in sight, in the site is it's hard to make 8.6625. Okay. So 8.7 meter into 2 meter. So the new, the adopted area, the adopted area is 8.72 multiplied by 2 meter. Are we fine? Okay. Yeah, it's 18.8.7 multiplied by 2. Okay, so these are the dimensions that we are having. Now, after finding the dimensions, after finding the dimensions, we need to have the, the third step which is finding the geometry. OK, so once again, the first step, the first step is to know the type of foundation mm -hmm. and we have done that. After that, we went to uh, calculate the area of the combined foundation. After that, we are going to go for finding the full dimensions of the foundation. OK, so let's say step number three. Finding. Dimensions. Okay. Adopted area is the dimension of the of the foundation that you are having. If you see here, if you see here, we have found the length to be 8.66. The width is 2, so I have already made this one to be 2. 8.66 is not something to be used in a site, you see. That's why the adopted area, instead of using 8.66, we are going to use 8.7. Okay, now what I understood, what I understood, I understood that this dimension is 8.7. Okay, and I have understood that this dimension from here to here is 
now what we need to what, what we need to do we need to calculate we need to calculate this dimension let's say that this is a and we need to calculate this dimension which is b any idea how would you calculate this dimension Any idea how would you calculate it? Okay. Eight point seven minus three point five. Now, unfortunately, 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 if you have done that solution and all of you are going to wrong, are going to get a wrong answer. OK. OK, now that's correct. Only whatever you are saying, whatever you are saying that 8.7 minus 3.5 minus 0.35 divided by 2 is going to be correct only in one scenario. Only if the loading, okay, only if the loading of the columns are equal to each other. If the columns are having equal loading, mm. then you can say that these are symmetrical in both sides. Do you remember when we have talked about the moment and the center of loading and the center of foundation? Did we talk about it? Okay. okay, so once again, once again, if the if the columns are having the same loading, whatever you have done is correct. If the loadings are not the same, I cannot provide the same dimension for both sides. Okay, it's not logical. It will cause you moment. Now what we need to do, we need to Let's say that this is B. Okay, and let's say that this is B. Okay. And we want can I can I calculate the moment at A? Can I calculate the moment at A? Now we know that there is a load here. We know that there is a load here. Okay. That these loads are um, here we have 710 and we have 560 and then here we have 830 and then we have 420. Can we calculate the moment here? Can we calculate the moment? Moment at A. How much moment at A is going to be? Okay. So you will see that the moment, the moment at A is going to equal 830 plus 420 multiplied by the distance given, which is 3.5 meter. Do you agree? Do you agree that the moment is equal to? OK, do you agree that the moment about A equals to the force multiplied by distance? Okay, so how much is it? We are going to have it as 4,375. And this unit is kilonewton meter. Amira, it is zero if you are talking about this. Actually, there are two forces. There are forces of column number two and there are forces of column number one. Forces of column number one will be multiplied by 3.5 because the distance between A and the load is 3.5. Moment is force multiplied by distance. For column number two, I mean, or let's say that this is C1, this is C2. So we can say that we are going to multiply C2 load, which is 830 plus 420 multiplied by 3.5, which is the distance to A. And then we need to multiply plus we need to multiply C1, 
into the distance. Now the distance of C1 to A is equal to zero. That's why from the beginning I didn't include it. Okay. Now if I have if I have M and if I have the forces which are we have how many forces here? We have four forces. We have 830, we have 420, we have 710, we have 560. How much are these? How much are these? Insert in 2520. Can you confirm for me? Are we okay till now? Whatever I have done, is it fine till now? Okay. Do you rem do you remember when you have do you remember when you have a couple system and you had to calculate the resultant? Do you remember? Do you remember when you had calculated couples in applied mechanics? And you were asked to find the resultant, and you were asked to calculate the distance from one of the dimensions. So we are going to go and use the same thing. Okay, we are going to use the same thing. What we want to calculate, we want to calculate the eccentricity from A. Now we have we have a general equation that says that moment is equal to force. P multiplied by eccentricity. Do you agree? Moment is equal to force, total force multiplied by eccentricity. Okay. Now what I want to say, I want to say now if I if I shift, okay, if I shift, if I go and shift my whole Four loads, so only a single load equal to two thousand five hundred and twenty. Then I need a distance of E to find four thousand three hundred and seventy five. Okay. That's whatever you have called resultant, right? Now I have four forces. Instead of having four forces, I'm trying to have only one force. With a single force. Can you turn off your mind? Single forces is equal to the sum of four forces. The sum of four forces. Can you please turn off your mics? Okay. So now E E equals 4375 divided by 2520. That's equal to 1.8. 736 meters. Okay. Now, how to confirm that my solution is correct? Now, if I go and say, now I have the same A and I have the same B, but now instead of having four loads, I'm having only one single load. This load is equal to 2520, which is the resultant. And having an eccentricity equal to 1.736. Will I get the same moment? Are they equal? Scenario number one, scenario number two. Okay, so moment is equal to 2520 multiplied by 1.736. And you will get the same answer. Okay, this is a very fundamental part that you have studied in your applied mechanics, if you remember. So now what we have got, we have got that the center of loading, the center of loading is having a distance of 1.736 from A and a distance of how much from B? 
from A, we have calculated that this is 1.736. From B, it's going to be 3.5 minus 1.736, because the whole distance from A to B is 3.5. Do you agree? Are we OK? Three, four. Okay. So now, can I say solution? Then no. Can I say no? At this dimension, the whole dimension. How much we have got it? The whole dimension. How much we have got? 8.7. So we have 8.7 meters. We have 3.5 here. And we have a point where the center of loading is acting. The distance from here to here is calculated as 1.36 of the center from here, sorry. From here to here, it's 1.726. And then from here to here, we have it as 1. Point, how much? The other one, 1.764. 1. 1.764. Are we clear now? Whatever, whatever I have done. Am I clear of whatever I have done? Now the loading here, if you see the loading, the loading for column number one and column number two are somehow close. That's why you are saying the dimensions to be close. Now, if the columns are not having some kind of similar value, then you will have a very huge difference between eccentricity of A and eccentricity of B. Okay. Anyhow, now, since this is the center of loading, to avoid any moment, this is going to be the center of foundation as well. Okay. okay this is going to be the center of foundation as well. So it means from here to here, this is going to be 4.35 and this is going to be 4.35. We said to avoid any moment, we need to make sure that the loading is going to be concentric, right? We don't want any eccentricity, which will cause us lecturer stresses. Do you remember? So the center of loading should be at the center of foundation. Now, by making them the same point, by making them the same point, we have avoided any chance of having any chance of having uh, moment. Okay, or eccentric loading. Now, can we get? Can we calculate? Can we calculate now this A? Let's say this B and this A. Now, if you see, if I take this portion. If I take this portion, saying that the distance from here to here is 4.35 meter, and the distance from here to here, it's 1.36. And then we have half of the column, because this is still the center, so we have the other half of the column. And whatever we require to calculate, we require to calculate this distance, which is A. Now, how to calculate A? How to calculate A? Can I say that A is equal to 4.35 minus 1.736 minus half of the column? Can I say like that? So how much is that value? 
how much is this value? So 2.439 meters. Now, can you check whether the screen is black? Can you see the screen now? Okay. So we need to calculate. We need to calculate B. So B, we can say that it's equal to 4.35 minus 1.6764 minus 0.35 divided by 2. And this is going to be this is going to be 2.41. Can you confirm? Are we fine? Oh. So by doing by doing this, we have started we have started uh, solving for the combined. We find all the geometry. Next step is to calculate for the bending point. Now you can see see that there are a lot of steps involved. They are not hard, but you need to go and uh, go and understand that. Let me just take a screen capture. So I'm not just draw it once again. Before taking this. So we said we said A is two point four four point four three nine. This is two point or one more. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I cannot go. I cannot go further. It's the end of the whiteboard. So that's why. Just going to stop right on there for the top. Okay, and this is this is where we have reached. Okay, are we fine till now? Are we fine till now? Okay, the next step, the next step is to calculate to calculate the bending moment. And before calculating the bending moment, we need to calculate first the pressure. And we said which pressure is used to calculate the bending moment. Is it the ultimate or is it the surface? Ultimate, surface, ultimate. You said ultimate, right? So to calculate my pressure, calculate my pressure, I can say. I can say that for this particular column, for column number one, we were having we were having loads of seven ten and five sixty. For column number two, we are having eight thirty and four twenty. 
Okay. So can I say like the ultimate or column number one or column number one is going to go 1.4 into 710 plus 1.6 into 560. Can you give me this value? And then we have ultimate for column number two. We have 1.4 into 830 plus 1.6 into 420. Now the first one, I believe it's 1890 as a mirror saved. And then the second one is 1834. So now for me, I'll just add the first one and the second one. So the first loading from the first column is 1890 plus 1834 34 divided by the area. We said pressure is equal to force divided by an area. My area of foundation is 8.7 multiplied by 2. Now, can you give me this value? Can you give me the value of pressure? Started. So we have it as 214.023 even Newton per meter square. Okay, so 214.023.02.0. Okay, that's up to you to round up. As long as I didn't ask you to how many decimals to round, it's up to you. And normally in design, I don't care about how many decimals you will, you will, uh, you will round to. Now, previously, if you remember previously, okay, previously, we used to multiply, okay, we used to multiply by one meter width for the design of or the design of slab and design of uh, isolated foundation. Okay. Now that is that is not the case. Okay, that's not the case. That is not the case for okay, that's not the case for a combined foundation. Now combined foundation we need to multiply by the actual width. which is two meters. Okay. Once again, for a combined foundation, for a combined foundation, we need to multiply, we need to multiply by two meter width. Okay. And I want you to think, I want you to think till the last part of the session today. Why why we are mul multiplying by one meter in the slab and isolated foundation and we multiply by the actual width here for a combined foundation. Okay, so just think of it till the end of the class and I'll give you the answer. So we have 428.45 kN per meter. Okay. Now, what we have concluded, what we have concluded, we have concluded that we have combined foundation. The combined foundation is having two loads. These the red are the borders of the column. Okay. And what we know. We know that the distance between these two columns are 3.5. And we know this distance from here. We have got it as 
four one one, and we know the distance from here. We have got it to be two point four three nine. Okay. Now we know that this loading or column number one, the loading is 1890 kilonewton. And we know for the second column it's 1830. Do you agree with these values? Okay. And we have and we have a pressure. We have a pressure of 428.05045 kilonewton per meter. Are we okay till now? Are we okay? Okay. Now, have you thought? Have you thought of? Have you thought of? Uh, have you thought of why? Why we need to to consider two meter or not yet? Before I forget, do you think multiplying by two meters is correct? Or it does not matter? Or maybe I'm the one who is making the mistake. Does it matter if we multiply by two? I do agree for the slab, we take it as one meter. And for the isolated foundation, we take it for. We take it for two meters. I mean, for, for isolated, we take it as one meter. Uh, for combined foundation, we take it for two meter or the actual width. Now, do you agree? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me that we need to have uh, equilibrium condition? Do you agree with me that we need to have equilibrium? Is it important that we have equilibrium? Is it important that the upward force and downward force are equal to each other to have equilibrium? Now, if I go and multiply, if you don't have equilibrium, the foundation will not stand in this position. position. Okay, so we need to have equilibrium. We have downward forces, which are the columns, which are, we have upward force, which is the pressure. So the pressure is having 428.45 over a length of 8.7 meter. Okay. It's 8.7 meter, right? So this is going to give you a total upward force of 3723. Now, if we reduce the first downward force, which is 1890, and then you subtract the second one, then you can see Minus one eight nine zero minus 
one okay you will see that we have reached to the equilibrium condition are we fine Are we clear? If you multiply it by one, your upward force, your upward force is not going to equal to your downward force, and you will never have a correct ending moment. Once again, once again, once again, this pressure, this pressure, this pressure is acting as a UDL now. <clears throat> this pressure is acting as a UDL which can go and con be converted as a point load. How to convert a point load? I mean, how to convert a UDL into a point load? By multiplying W into L. Your W is 428.045. Your L is 8.7, the length of the condition, the length of the UDL. So we have a total upward force of 3,700 and 23 point something. Do you agree? Let's say 24. Do you agree? OK. Now, is it important that the upward force and the downward force are equal or not? Is it important that the upward and downward force are equal to each other to achieve equilibrium? Normally, you, you equate the equations, right? Sigma vertical, sigma horizontal. Why are you doing that? You are doing to ensure equilibrium. Now, if you are not multiplying by two, if you are not multiplying by two, this will never be in equilibrium. Okay, if you are not multiplying by the actual way, equilibrium, if it's not in equilibrium, you cannot draw your bending moment diagram. Can you mute yourself? So now we have 3,723 as upward force. We have two downward forces. The resultant of these forces should equal to zero. Otherwise, this is not in equilibrium and you cannot solve for it. So we reduce the first one. We reduce the second one. And you can see that we are reaching already to, to the value of zero. It means that the sum of vertical forces is equal to zero. That's one of the equilibrium conditions, right? Are we clear? Correct. Okay, good. Now we need to calculate the bending moment diagram. Now, do you remember how to calculate the bending moment diagram? Okay. So can you tell me how much is the bending moment diagram at this point, in this line, in this point? Can you tell me how much is the bending moment at this point? This one at the face of the column. At the face of the column. Can you calculate it? So four thousand six hundred zero nine point seven. How did you calculate for it? These are the dimensions. And this is your pressure. You cannot see it as well.
So till now, nobody has got the correct answer. Okay. Clear length is in front of you. Okay. So the correct answer, the correct answer is what Suleiman has given, which is 1,273. Okay. Now, to keep it clear, rather than doing a lot of calculation, to keep it clear, you need to know certain scenarios. I need to know the bending moment in case of a UDA or a cantilever. Mm -hmm. And the bending moment is equal to Okay. W L square over two. And the shear force for this case is equal to W L. No, the point is in the length only. Okay. And then the second scenario is if we are having a point loop. So if we're having a point load, then your bending moment is equal to W into L, and your shear is equal to W. These two things that you need to know without doing a lot of calculation. Okay, now if I go and take this portion, if I go and take this particular portion, okay, I'll see it in this way. I'll see that they have a fixed support here, which is the face of the column. I have a distance here. This distance, this distance is equal to 2.439 and a pressure of 428.045. Directly, my bending moment diagram for a cantilever for the UDL, M is equal to W square over two. So it's going to be 428.045 multiplied by 2.439 square divided by two. And then you will get whatever Suleiman has got. Yeah, that that, that is W square over two. Okay. Whatever equation is W square over two. Okay, so what is what is the value? One thousand two hundred. One thousand two hundred seventy three point six. Okay. So this Mr. is. Mister, can you repeat it once again, please? Because we can't see the screen at the same time where you explain. Others, can you see the screen while I'm writing? So once again, taking a load here, the section is having a length of 2.439. The pressure has been given or calculated already as 428.045, and you need to calculate the moment. This is a cantilever because of the network. Okay. So this is a cantilever with the UDA. And the equation for a cantilever and a UDA is W square over 2. So we have got the value of bending moment. And of course, it's going to be a parabolic because of the UDA. Okay, now, now can we calculate for this side? Can we calculate here as well? Can we go and calculate here? Now, if we take in this side, we take in this side, you will see that once again, we are having a fixed support. A length of 2.411 now. Okay, 2.411 now. Okay, 2.411. And then we have a pressure. It is a column. 
course it will be a fixed as well. 2.44, the column is fixing the foundation's position. So 2.44, and we have a pressure of 428. So your M value is going to equal to W square over 2. So how much is that value? How much is that value? One thousand two hundred forty four point zero nine. Okay, so we can go and look the vending moment that this is one thousand two hundred forty four point zero nine or point one. It's up to you. Okay, now let us go for shear. Let us go for shear. Do you remember when I said for you, shear is a matter of going up and down? Shear is a matter of going up and down. Okay, so let us start with shear. Let us start with shear. Now, if you see in the first portion, in the first portion we have the load going up, which is a pressure. So my diagram should go up. So I need to have some weird value here. How much is the value? The value is converting the UDL into a point. Okay. Converting the UDL into a point. So how to convert the UDL into a point four is 428.045. This is the W. L is 2.439. Can you give me this value? Can you give me this value? For a shear force, we have agreed. For a shear force, we have agreed that V is equal to W into L. Okay. So we have it as 1044. Okay. So 1044 point. Okay, let's say 1044. Now can we calculate? This is what shape? Now this is a triangle shape, right? Do we agree that this is a triangle shape? Can we calculate the area of this triangle? Where the base? We get the base is 1000. The height is 1044. The base is 2.439. The base from here to here, this distance is 2.439. So if I want to calculate the area, that's half into base, into height, and you will see that this value is going to give you the bending moment diagram value. And you have studied that the area of shear, the area of shear will give you the bending moment, right? Do you remember? The area of bending moment will give you the area of shear force diagram will give you the bending moment. Okay, so it's up to you. It's up to you to use the equations or to find the shear and then finding the area of the shear to go for the bending moment. Okay, now, okay. Now, can we calculate for this point? Can we calculate here how much is the value of shear? Can you give me how much is the value at the center of the column? At the center of the column. The center of the column. Now, how much is the distance from here to here? In the center of the column. The red line are representing center of column. This distance was 2.439, and this distance is half of the column, that is 0.175. So can you add these values up? 
if you add the value and multiply by the pressure, you get this value. How much is this? Not possible. Not possible. So, I mean, I don't want the length. Give me the total loading. I'm asking for the loading. How much is the loading? The loading is how much? The total loading. The total loading is going to go for around 1,118.9, I believe. Okay, so 1,118.9. So 1,118.9. And then we have, and then we have a point load. How much is the value of point load here? How much is the value of a point load? Point load is taking you down or up? This point load, after you went up because of the pressure, the point load will take you down or up? It will take you down. What is the value? The value of the value of let me move my calculator with him so you can see as well. Okay. So what I had, I had 2.439 plus 0 0.175. I multiplied it by the by the pressure. It's 1118.9. This is going up. And then we have a point loan, a point load going down. So I'll just have minus sign. And then the loading, which is 1890. So this is going to go for. 700. point zero nine. The negative represents downwards. Now, after having, we have finished that here upwards, here downwards. Once again, we have upwards here. Okay, we have upwards here. Okay. So how to find, how to find the, you will see that this will go up now because of the upward force. This will go up, right? Now, can you give me this value? Now, if you remember, I was at point of minus 77.10.09. And I need to increase. How much to increase? I need to increase by the value of this upward force. How to find the upward force? The distance between this center of the red color to the center of the other column is 3.5. So what I need to do. I need first to multiply 3.5 multiplied by the pressure, which is 428.045. Then upward force now equals to 1498.1575. And then we have negative 77109. Give you a value of this will give you a value of 727.06. So this is not the, to the scale, but okay, so we have 727.06.57. And then once again, after we finished upward force from here, downwards from here, upward from force from here, we need to go for the for the downward force. So the downward force is equal to how much? The downward force is equal to 1835. So once again, I'll open my calculator. Now we are at 727 upwards. 
minus because we need to consider a negative or downwards force. 1834. So we have it as minus 1126. Right, Amir? So one thousand Yeah, I'm calculating now to the face of the column. One thousand. One thousand. Okay. Not this one. Not to the red color, let's say. Maybe I understood your point sure. Whatever we have calculated, it's in the face of the until the center of the top. So this is 727.0657. Oh, well, that was the previous one was was separate. Okay. So 727.0657. Yes, Shiro. And then we have point one thousand. Nine thirty. And then after that, we have another upward force. How much is this upward force? We need to know the distance. The distance is 2.44. The distance is 2.411 plus half of the column. So 0 0.175, 2.586 multiplied by the pressure that is 400. To give you one thousand one hundred and six point nine three. So one thousand one hundred and six point nine three minus one thousand nine three. We get the value of zero. And it means that our minimum our, our shear force is correct. Okay, it means that our shear force is correct. If you don't get it to be zero, then your shear force is wrong. So now we have drawn, we have drawn the shear force. Uh, we have drawn the shear force diagram. We can go and calculate. This is this is already till the face of the support. This is till the face of the support. We can go and calculate it. Yes, Amir. What about it? Mister, I mean that value 1032.022 is the face of the support of the second column. You didn't write it or it's not on board yet. 1106. That's the correct answer. There we have two values as uh, 1044 and 118. There are two values also here. Now, if we go and use a calculator, here we have got a value of 727.056. So 727.0657. And then we have a downward force of 1830. To this point, I want to check whether it's correct or not. How? I need to calculate the pressure into the length. How much is the length? We have we have 2.44 till the face of the column, and then we have 0 0.1075. That's half of the column. So 2.411. 
plus half of is 0 0.175. This is the length from the end till the center of the column. We need to multiply it by the pressure. getting it to be 1,100. This is the amount of the upward force. So we have 1,100 in negative, and then we have 1,106 in positive, which will return it to zero. So the calculation is right. <coughs> okay. Now, the screen is not visible. It means that because of the network. Because I didn't close the screen. Okay. okay. So now, after we have calculated, after we have calculated, uh, after we have calculated the uh, shear force, we can go and calculate your bending norm. There will be one point here as well, and there will be one point here. OK, there will be one point in red and the other point in red, which is representing, which is representing, which is representing the center of the column. And then after that, we have this shape. OK, we have this shape for the bending moment. Now, we have a negative point, but we said we cannot use the face of the column. I mean, we cannot use the center of the column. We use the face of the column. So now we have one point here. We have another point here in negative, and then we need to have the positive value. Now, can you help me in finding the negative, the positive value? Can you help me in finding the positive value by finding the zero point? Yes. Anybody? The screen is black. The screen cannot be black. It might be because of the connection you have. Because I didn't disconnect the ship the screen. Okay. So we have here 700, we have here 727.09, and then we have here 700, sorry, 700. We have 771.09, and then we have 727.0657. How to find, how to find the, what we call how to find this dimension because this dimension is important for me to calculate the bending moment the maximum bending moment will occur wherever there is zero shear force okay so i can calculate it i can calculate it using i can calculate it we cannot see the screen Others are not seeing the screen. We can see. Okay, for those who cannot see, for those who cannot see, you need to go, you need to go and see the video later. Okay, so rather than rather than using rather than using uh, what you call similar triangle method. Normally I go and use, uh, normally I go and use the pressure. Okay. Normally I go and use uh, the pressure. Now you can see, you can see th this is a length, right? And its unit is moment. And its unit is moment. Now can I say to find this L? Can I use 
the force that is in kilonewton divided by pressure that's in kilonewton per meter where the meter will go up so now if you can see i can say that 771.09 divided by 428.045 will give you the answer of x without using the method of similar triangle without using a lot of headache The correct answer is going to be 1.8, I think. Amira has mentioned it previously. So 1.8, but rather than doing the similar triangle and losing a lot of time, we can use this concept. Okay. So now, if we know, okay, if we know how much is uh, this particular distance, if you know how much is this particular distance, you should be able, okay, you should be able to go and calculate the value of bending moment here. Okay, you can go and calculate the value of bending moment by taking the triangles. For those who are having class, they may leave. I'll just finish this bending moment, and then I'm going to finish the class. So we have triangle number one going upwards. And then we have triangle number two going downward, downwards. Okay. This is 1118.9. This is 771.09. This is distance from here to here. We have got it to be. 1.801 now and then this distance this distance we have got it to be how much is it how much is this distance four three nine plus zero point one seven five Two point six one four. So it's point. Yeah, I said those who are having class, they can leave. You already know how to calculate bending moment. I'm just explaining because I'll not return back to it later. So we have area one minus area two. We have this is going up and this is going down. Once again, those who are having a class, they can leave. I'm just doing whatever you have studied in theory one for the calculation of moment. Because I'll not return back to it next class. Okay. So we have area one and we have area two. So I can say half into 1118. Point nine multiplied by point two point six one four minus half into one point eight zero one multiplied by seven seven one point zero half into base into height. Can you give me the value here? Can you give me this value? Can you give me the value here? Seven hundred sixty-eight point zero three five three. Um, is it negative in sign? Is it negative in sign or the same? Okay. 
thousand one hundred. Let me just verify it. I was making it negative or positive is going to change a lot of parameters. And then we have the second one that is half. Is 600, 940, 94.36. So you are going to have a positive value of, you are going to have a positive value of 700, 68.0353. Now, what does positive mean? What does positive mean? Positive mean, it means that this, it means that the curve, okay. See now, this is taken to be positive. We have taken it 1,200, the value was taken from the beginning to be positive, 1,118, 18.9. So what we can say, what we can say, we can say that the bending moment diagram now, okay, the bending moment diagram, one is 1,200. Okay, so the bending moment diagram is going to go of this shape, rather than going downwards, if you got a negative sign, if you got a negative sign, then you have it, going downwards, we are having it as a positive, positive sign. Okay. So this value now is going to go for 768. So 768. Right. So we don't have actually, we don't have downwards moment. All the moments that we are having, all the moments that we are having is going to be upward, okay, which is a very rare case, which is a very rare case of a combined foundation because of the long edges on the sides. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise in regular problems, you will see that the, uh, the curve is going to go a little bit, uh, little bit down. So you will have positive and negative, but in this scenario, everything is going to go for the positive or the upward Pending moment. Anyhow, further we'll talk about it in the upcoming class. Um, let me just export here. Uh, anybody is having any question? Any person is having any question before leave? Yes, please, Mister. Yes. <clears throat> Mister, I'm having an issue with downloading the last uh, sessions. How can I download it? You cannot. Unfortunately. You cannot? Unfortunately, no, it's not possible for the student. I think it has been made by the, by the ATC in such a way that the student cannot download. The lecturer is the only one to download to modify if there is anything. And I'll see if I'm going to download it for you. And then upload it in YouTube like previous. If, is it, if is it possible, please download it in YouTube. We need especially the last classes, which is having design methods. But you can go and see it in the team, right? But Mr. Even in teams, it's not only we. Okay. In, in Teams, uh, it will be for uh, available for 20 days only, and sometimes we want to check something. We cannot go back. It's difficult more than using.